What's going on, everybody? Did Tesla disappoint us at We Robots? Well, some people will actually think that. But when it comes to me, I think it's electric and it was interesting, but it wasn't that phenomenal. Now, of course, for me to see the cyber taxi, the cab of the future is amazing. I love the design, especially the gold. I don't know if you've seen it. I will show it in this video, but the future is gold, baby. But this vehicle, super interesting, all right? And it was definitely very interesting to also see Optimus engaged with the audience. Unlike majority of other robotic company, most people don't get to interact with the robots. And some people online are going back and forth with whether it was controlled by someone else remotely or was it truly autonomous at that time but hey who cares let's actually tune in to the big homie jim and see what he has to say about jim kramer talks tesla disappointing robo taxi event let's get into it tesla had its long anticipated we robot event the big unveiling event for their upcoming robo taxis and as you can see from the stock's hideous 8.8 percent decline today it, it, let's just say it didn't go over well Remember, Tesla needed a win here. Around the middle of last year, Wall Street realized that there just wasn't as much demand for electric vehicles as people thought. EV growth started slowing across the... Best-selling car in 2023. And then also, every event Tesla has held in its history has not performed well in the next day in the market. That's just facts. All right? Like, the stock has increased 1,200% in the last five to six years. That's a great return. That's a great business. Also, at its fundamental, fundamental building blocks. And also, Tesla is the number one selling car. This would make sense if it wasn't the number one selling car. But people talking about EV sales declining, or it's a big issue, and talking about the company that had the best selling car and the first EV ever to be the best selling car. Not the best selling EV, but the best selling car. But I'll allow them to continue because the stock decreased by 8.8% after the event. The whole auto industry and Tesla in particular just got clobbered as it faced all sorts of new competition for a more slowly growing pie. Hey, some of these new electric cars from China are incredible and very reasonably priced. Tesla actually saw its delivery shrink for the first two quarters of the year. And they were only up in the third quarter because the company was lapping a bad production quarter from the year before. And that's why the stock lost more than half of its value from July of last year through this April. But it bottomed at 138. What happened in April? Elon Musk changed the conversation. Even though Tesla reported a disappointing quarter, Musk very effectively pivoted to talking about self-driving cars. And it all hinged on this robo-taxi event. That's the also, too, he did not pivot. FSD has been a part of the company for a long time. He's been talking about it. There's a whole team. It's been developed for a long time. People create content online talking about FSD. I mean, that's nothing new. But again, once you leave it to these guys, I mean, these short term, I mean, day traders posing to be real investors, but they never really make trillions of dollars that they claim that they could make because they know everything about the market. But I guess Elon all of a sudden pivoted to a robo taxi event and has no actual basis of his business where we could look at the energy department and see the massive amounts of growth. We can see that the first factory ever in North of America was built for battery storage and it's ramping up and it's considerable amount of the profits overall. But you know, that doesn't matter. What does matter is that we didn't get the 25K car. Um, he didn't go in the direction that we think he should go, though. The people who said it twist Daryl knobs and have never created an actual automotive company that's been successful. Um, Tesla has been the first successful one in the last 40, 50 years. And so net net Elon wrong stock analysis, wall street. They know everything and they're always right. Got it. Let's move on. The whole reason to own the stock here. I think something must flat out admitted on that first conference call. It turned out around uh, if the stock for a while, people liked it. Okay. In fact, it nearly doubled in three months. I got excited about it, too. But when Tesla reported another week quarter in July and announced that the robo-taxi event was delayed to October, the stock went into another tailspin. Of course, it bottomed again within a month and then started ramping. That move was all about anticipation, not just of the robo-taxi event, but also for a rate cut cycle from the Federal Reserve. Unfortunately, when the We Robot event finally arrived, the market just was not impressed. 
Sure, anyone who watched this thing has to be, I mean, this thing was visually stunning. We were mesmerized by it in the office. There were three main pieces of hardware that debuted last night. First was the Robotax itself, which Musk calls the CyberCap. Good name. A sleek two-seater coupe-like vehicle with gullwing doors and a clean, simple interior. No steering wheel uh, or pedals. Only two people, please. Crucially, uh, Musk said the CyberCab will cost less than $30,000. So that small business owners can buy a whole fleet of them. He took a little ride in one of these CyberCabs around the Warner Brothers lot to kick off the event. And afterwards, attendees had a chance to ride in. It's pretty cool. Man, he came away quite impressed. Of course, there's nothing truly surprising here. The surprise, though, was a new van or bus like vehicle that Tesla's calling the RoboVan which can carry up to 20 people and also transport goods. Very Art Deco. This is what we thought the future would look like when I was a kid, which was like, you know, 100 years ago. Finally, the coolest piece of hardware we saw last night was Tesla's humanoid robot. This I love, okay? Orally called the Tesla Bot or Optimus. Now, we've seen these things before, but it's always cool to see the latest generation of these robots. They said they were dancing on stage, serving drinks, and we even have some pretty good conversations with people. Must we reiterate that these Optimus robots will be for sale at scale and it costs around 20000 to 30000 He said that Optimus could do, quote, anything you want. So it can be a teacher, a babysit your kids, it can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get your Groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks, whatever you can think of. End quote. I, I don't know. I, I can use one of those. My wife's mad at me. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm going to kill some time when she's playing Candy Crush. Again, visually, all this was stunning. Musk really put the vision in visionary. But what about financially? Oh, really? The finances? Okay. Look, Tesla's. Wait, hold on. Let's pause there because, of course, they're going to make claims that, let me think, let me think. They never provide details, they never provide financing when actually Tesla, Elon Musk, and the company actually is the most detail oriented company ever to exist. But let me explain what a lot of these normies don't quite get is. Guys, let me explain something to you. When you deal with Apple, Apple doesn't tell you what they're going to do. They don't tell you about their product. You're not a bird eye view or you don't get the information from Twitter coming from Tim Cook about what they're doing. I mean, what happened to the actual car, the EV car that they were producing? Did that ever come out? But I don't hear people ranting and raving that Apple never delivers. It's just a difference. Apple just never tells you about what they're going to deliver until they deliver it. But one thing that you get from Tesla is information, okay? So Elon Musk being involved in almost everything with the supply chain and everything with the process of creating anything in any of its companies, you get the understand of the mind of the research and developers, the inventors, the innovators. And so you get to hear what he says about it. And what I'm showing right here on the screen, guys, is how things actually end up rolling out. Research and development stage. Manufacturers invest heavily in research and development to design phones, design phones in cars and other products, right? And so Elon, you get to hear about him because he'll tell you what they're research and development. He'll tell you about the capital expenditure when they put massive amounts of money in a thing called Cortex or et cetera. He tells you about all this, but other companies don't. You have to hear about it on the shh, 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 on the quiet. You hear about Apple secretly making a car in a corner somewhere, but Tesla doesn't operate like that. Next thing is the component sourcing. Hundreds of parts like chips, batteries, and displays are sourced from suppliers globally. And you know, Tesla has a good habit or trait or potential or skill set to actually vertically integrate. So yes, we get chips from one part, then we start designing our own chips. Yes, we get batteries from LG or Samsung, but eventually we do our own batteries. And so we end up vertically integrating. We used to get our actual minerals from somewhere else, but now we have a lithium ion refinery in Texas. So, wow, that's pretty interesting. But anyways, now you get the manufacturing part. The components come together on assembly line for mass production, okay? And this is where you guys don't understand that Tesla has the cutting edge amongst everybody. It's one of the most advanced factories on the planet. And it's not just one, it's multiple factories. And as I spoke about earlier about the battery storage factory in California. Yeah, that's the first ever in North of America. It's a first time and they're doing great at it. Again, we just built a mega factory over in Shanghai and broke ground for that. So we're always having research development and capital expenditure, developing a product, right? Now we have distribution, right? The phones are shipped and a bulk via air, land, sea, and et cetera. So there's still a process, but what happens with Tesla often is because Elon's the designer, because Elon's the engineer, because Elon's a part of everything in the supply chain, you hear about it early. That's the good part about actual Tesla versus Apple. When they make the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 iPhone, they just give it to you. See, they don't talk about when it's before it comes out or anything. They're just going to release it. And all their other products, again, shh, mum's the word. What happened to them? 
Apple creates so much products and services, but they don't actually come to fruition. You just don't hear the designers on Twitter. That's it. They protect their IP. That's it. But Elon provides the information. So most people are always disappointed by this or that, but they fail to understand that Tesla is including them in the process. The electric vehicle market turned out to be substantially smaller than most thought. If they want to pivot to self-driving cars, they need to really flesh that out. And last night, we just didn't get much in the way of specific details. One of my favorite analysts followed by name Morgan Stanley's Adam Jonas. And he, he, it's someone who's been a big Tesla fan, but he published a reaction note to We Robot and it was kind of, this was really, I saw this this morning, so it's going to be a long day for this guy, for, uh, for Tesla. This is disappointing lack of detail. And, I and again, they're always complaining about lack of detail. The most detail-orientated company in the United States of America with their manufacturing process, and they lack details at the events. Well, I'm not mad about that, right? Like at the end of the day, for me, as an investor, for me, investing into the company, I can care less if they go to details on presentations and events. And what I care most is they go into details when it comes down to manufacturing, when it comes down to actually producing a product, when it comes down to adding value, when it comes down to research and development. So unlike you, Jim Craner, get off my screen. I'm more so worried about the tech behind it. Get into the details when it comes down to manufacturing. Get into the details when it comes down to the supply chain. Get into the details when it comes down to shipping. Get into the details when it comes down to everything that's important, the business. Detail oriented in the business, maybe not detail oriented in presentations and events. You can ask for presentations and events with details. I'll rather ask for details in the product, in the service. That's the difference between Tesla and the rest. It's electric, baby. Remember, we always deliver. Shout outs to everybody in Obstacles to Opportunity. I know somebody is going to write in the chat also that you didn't deliver the roaster. Well, Apple didn't deliver their car and a bunch of other products, but I don't see nobody hassling them. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Like, share, subscribe, support the channel. And we robot or it's electric. It's probably both.